Welcome everyone to our first virtual awards ceremony celebrating American Numismatic Association membership and literary awards. For many of us, participating in a Zoom event is a new experience. Uh, we, may, we may have lost the ability to gather together at the World's Fair of Money, but this format still allows us to honor and celebrate our distinguished colleagues as a community. If the pandemic has taught us one thing, it's that we will do whatever we must to continue connecting with one another in meaningful ways. You can count on the ANA to produce a plethora of new digital programs, webinars, videos, podcasts, and more that will keep you informed, entertained, and engaged. So until such time that we can see each other again at shows, seminars, and club meetings, we hope to continue seeing you in this new virtual universe. Before we move forward, Brianna Victor will take just a moment to share with us how Zoom's program will work for us today. And I'm glad that you're all here with us. Thank you, Kim. Thank you everybody for joining us. We will have a few people speaking today, so you will see pictures moving around quite a bit while we move to the presentation and as we go. If you have any questions, please use the chat feature and we'll respond as soon as we can. I know Zoom is new for many of you, but it's pretty straightforward. Everyone will be muted during the presentation unless you are a part of the scripted program, in which case I will unmute you when you are called to speak. As in all things with technology, occasionally we might expect an issue or two with sound. I hope you'll be patient with us. Today's program will be recorded and will be available for viewing at money.org at a future date. And now I'll turn the program over to ANA President Steve Ellsworth. Uh, thanks, Brianna and Kim, and, and I want to thank especially the staff who's really worked hard on this and done a great job putting this together. Hello, everyone. I, uh, I'm Steve Ellsworth. I'm president of the ANA, and uh, I'll be hosting our first virtual ANA awards for our membership and literary. Uh, like you, I'm very disappointed that we were not able to have our World's Fair of Money, but uh, we're hoping and we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can have our national money show in March. Uh, in, uh, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us and taking time out of your day. Hopefully it'll be entertaining and, uh, and a challenge anyway for all of us. Um, we'll kick off the event by first recognizing the National Silver Dollar uh, Roundtable Award winner. I'd like to welcome John Highfill if he's here, the founder of the NSDR. And uh, which is another nonprofit organization that educates its members to the greater community about U.S. silver dollars. John, are you here today? I'm not seeing him. Okay, we'll move on then. The National Silver uh, Down uh, Roundtable was founded uh, by John uh, in 1982. Just as a, a note about that. Um, this year's recipient is uh, for Woman of the Year is going to be Beth. Dreischer. Uh, Beth was selected for her lifetime achievement, uh, her decades-long career of coin in coin world and her involvement in numismatic groups such as the National Silver Dollar Roundtable, the American Numismatic Association, the uh, Professional Numismatics Guild, the Industry Council of Tangible Assets, where she would take on a role as the first director of the Anti-Counterfeiting Task Force. Force Beth's work in numismatics has immensely benefited our community. The NSDR and its members are greatly honored to present this award to Beth Dyser. Beth, Beth, would you like to say a few words? Beth, you are unmuted, so you should be able to speak now. Oh, come on. I guess we'll move on, Steve. I see, see she's on here, but for some reason she's not able to speak. Okay. Well, Hello. Uh, oh, Hello. There she is. Yep, there we she can is. hear you. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I would like to thank the National Silver Dollar Roundtable for this honor. It's especially uh, meaningful to me because I was around in 1982 when uh, the roundtable was created. But I am really appreciative of their help and work in the last three years with the anti-counterfeiting work, uh, 
uh, movement and work that has been accomplished in uh, the organization as well as many of their members stepped up to help. So I really appreciate this award. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Um, members of the, uh, we're now like to recognize our 25, 50 and 60 year members. Um, Members of the American Numismatic Association aspire to the highest numismatic standards while adding strength to the voice of the hobby. Traditionally, we would have people stand, but for today's program, we'll share all the names at the end of the presentation. It's our pleasure to recognize 181 members who have reached their 25-year milestone in 2020. Their names are listed on slides, which I encourage you to review at the end of the event. <clears throat> Now a huge shout out for 144 members who have reached their 50 year milestone in the 2020 program. You will have to, you will be able to read their names as well at the end of the program. And believe it or not, we have this year, I don't ever remember this many, but we have 45 members reaching their 60 year milestone for the 2020. This group can be seen listed at the end of the program as well. Is there anyone, uh, Brianna, that was going to speak on behalf of these members, or are we just going to move on? We're going to move on from this one. Okay. Uh, we will re now recognize the ANA member clubs that have attained membership milestones. Uh, four member clubs have reached the 25 year milestone in 2020, which are listed on the screen. Can we have Richard just uh, read these, or do you want me to read them? You'd like to reach in, read him. I'm sorry, say again. Um, he's oh, there he goes. If he likes to, he can. Oh, we have the Blue Grass Coin Club, the Front Range Coin Club, Saratoga Coin Club, and the oh, gee, this one went St Stamfiger OG Rockelon Mit. Mignick book? Is that German? I don't know, but you did a great job with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recognize that club. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We also have five member ANA clubs who have obtained their 50-year membership milestone, which you can uh, see here. Richard, you want to read through those real quick? Yes. The Early American Coppers, which I'm very familiar with. The Livermore Valley Coin Club, which I believe is the Tennessee. Mesa Puaqua Coin Club. I think it's that in New York State. Yeah, Mesa Olympia Coin Club. Mesa that's in, yeah. That's in Washington State. I mean, no, Olympia, yeah, Washington. A professional numismatic uh, guild. Great. Then, nine, yeah. member, nine member clubs have been recognized for reaching the 60 year membership milestone, and they're listed on the slide. You want to read those through for everybody? Yes, Colorado Springs Newest Max Society, which I am a proud member of. The Greater Port Arthur Coin Club, and that's in Texas. The uh, Hickettstown Coin Club. The Illinois Numismatic Association, which supports us in Chicago. Montgomery County Coin Club, and I believe that one's in Maryland. Red Rose Coin Club, that's in Pennsylvania. Shreveport Coin Club, of course, in um, Louisiana. Tarsville Numismatic Society, and of course, the Big Texas Numismatic Association. Wonderful. Okay, but last but not least, reaching 75 years. <laughs> Holy heck. <laughs> Your milestone as an ANA member club are two. Richard, what are they? The Miami Valley Coin Club, which is formerly the Dayton Keatering Era Coin Club. I think that's in Ohio. I think so. Anyway, that's an absolutely amazing uh, feat there. And then uh, also we'd like to move on. Uh, thank you, Richard. You're Our welcome. next award um, is the John and Nancy Wilson Member Booster Award. Are John and Nancy here? Are they on the call? Let's see here. John or Nancy, either one. Poor Brianna's got to go through about a hundred names. <laughs> Let's see here. 
I'm not, oh, there's John. I hope this is the right John. So John Wilson, I'm allowing you to talk. If it goes. Can you hear me? Yep. We can hear you. Oh, great, great. Well, I've been on other Zoom meetings, and uh, this has got to be pretty difficult. I've never been on with 75 or 80 other people, and uh, basically it's always been a very limited number. But anyway, uh, John, my wife Nancy and I are honored to uh, uh, sponsor this booster award, and uh, basically we don't know who's the recipient yet for this year's award. And uh, uh, basically, uh, like everybody else, we've been homebound since the next the national money show in Atlanta, not doing anything and uh, recruiting a few members here and there. And uh, I noticed that the ANA does have a lot of promotions with the silver coins and other promotions and the memberships maintaining. Hopefully uh, uh, ANA will be able to be at the uh, uh, Florida United Numismatist show in uh, January where Nancy and I are going to be there Wednesday and we leave Friday night and then Saturday we fly to the international show in New York and hopefully somebody from ANA will be there and we can uh, sign up another 50 members or so for ANA. And uh, uh, thanks again for having this meeting and uh, from the board and staff and, and like uh, our president said, thanks for all your work at uh, headquarters. It's uh, very trying during this COVID times and hopefully that'll be thing of the past uh, in a month or two. Thanks. You bet. Kim, since you uh, have a special relationship with the uh, recipient, maybe you could uh, announce the name for us if that's possible. You need to unmute. <laughs> oh. Am I unmuted now? You are. Yes. Okay, hold on a minute. I hit something. Okay, sorry guys. Um, the I, I hope I have this right because I don't have a script. So, is the initial start with an S and an? It does. <laughs> well, that I'm doesn't. Sorry, I thought you had the script. Me. I apologize. I didn't mean to That's put you okay. on the spot. That's okay. That's okay. Yes, I had the privilege of working with this wonderful ANA life member for many years and she has been a strong advocate for growing our membership roles. Uh, it, it has been an honor to have known her for so many years. I, it's over 20 now, uh, but congratulations, Sandy Hill. She is very special, very special. Okay. So Sandy uh, is on. Oh, I, I'm, I'm here. Go ahead. I'm here. The, the uh, phone keeps telling me to hit star six to unmute, but I didn't think I was unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I'm, I'm very honored to receive this award. I uh, didn't sell those memberships in order to get it. Um, I sold the memberships because of the wonderful organization that ANA is, and I just like to share. And thank you, John and Nancy. I appreciate this. Thank you, Sandy. It's always great to hear from you. Um, we'd like to uh, move on now with the dealers and businesses who have sponsored members through their organizations and recognized with the Dealer Booster Award. Um, is, uh, is Mary on the line here, Brianna? She is. Well, then let's um, let her start six. Mary from, uh, uh, counts from Whit Whitman. For listening. And they sponsored 188 new members this last year to join the ANA. That's an incredible number. You, I'm here. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Good. Um, um, thank y'all so much. On behalf of all the Associates of Whitman Publishing, it's such an honor to receive the Dealer Booster Award. Um, first and most importantly, um, from everyone at Whitman, we do want to send our best wishes for those in this great hobby that might have been affected by the pandemic or even the recent hurricane. Just know that our daily thoughts and prayers are with each of you for your health and safety. Um, and related to the award, you know, the ANA's mission is dedicated to educating, encouraging people to study 
and collect money and related items. Well, the a and a mission aligns with Whitman, so through our coin folders, albums, and publications, we feel it is very important for us to promote the ANA as a source for vital information. So while it's exciting that people was able to sponsor 188 new members with these efforts, um, we really want to set the bar even higher for 2021. And with that said, we also would like to challenge other businesses or organizations to follow suit by setting goals in 2021 to try to gain more membership or sponsors. Um, so again, from all the associates of Whitman Publishing, a heartfelt thank you for this award. And we so look forward to seeing everyone in the near future. Thank you, Mary. I, I'm sorry, I, I messed up the last name. I didn't mean to do that. I, it's a product of my age. Anyway, thanks again hey, for this. Steve, you can call me Mary Counts or Mary Bellers, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. We, we go back one or two years, I think. I don't want to say how many, but a, a long time. Um, I don't think I had gray hair when I first knew you. <laughs> uh, I, think you were, I think you were a teenager or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, we'd like to Thank now you. go into the uh, Barbara Gregory Outstanding Club Publication Awards and is... Uh, uh, each year, the, since 1971, the American Numismatic Association has recognized the best journals and newsletters produced by ANA member organizations. An entry in this year's Barbara J. Gregory Outstanding Club Publications Competition were judged in four categories. There was local, regional, specialty, and electronic. Uh, and I'd like to acknowledge the winners. Is, uh, is Barbara on the call? I saw her name. Let me find her. She is. Okay, Barb, I'm allowing you to talk if you would like. Well, certainly, I'd be happy to. What a pleasure it is to see all of you folks and be here today. Do you want to uh, uh, list the clubs or would you like me to read them off for you, Barbara? Uh, you, if they're listed, that would be fine. I'd be happy to read them. And if you have them in front of you. There they are, right there. They just there came we up. Go then. Sure, go ahead. Well, I am happy to announce uh, the uh, third place winner of the local club publications competition. And that is editor Stephen James. I'm sorry, that is the Stephen James CSRA Coin Club newsletter. Uh, edited by Arno Safran. So congratulations to the uh, CSRA club and Arno. Second place is the SVCC newsletter uh, put out by the Sacramento Valley Coin Club, editor Patrick Carpenter. And first place goes to Pocket Change, produced by the Albuquerque Coin Club, editor Phil Vitale. Phil, congratulations and congratulations to the Albuquerque Coin Club. The third place regional club publications award goes to the Clarion, produced by the Pennsylvania Association of Numismatists, edited by Richard Jewell. Congratulations. Second place in the regional competition is the TNA News, produced by Texas Numismatic Association, edited by Anne Marie Avance. And first place goes to the Mishmatist. Michigan State Numismatic Society, editor Michael Stroh. Specialty class, third place, goes to the Aeroscope, produced by Konica, edited by Alan Anderson. Second place in the specialty category is the International Banknote Society Journal, edited by Alexander Court. And first place goes to The Asylum, produced by the Numismatic Bibliomania Society, edited by Maria Fanning. Congratulations. In the electronic category, third place goes to Double Shift, produced by the Greater Houston Coin Club, edited by John Barber. Second place is The Mittmaster, produced by the Utah Numismatic Society, edited by Douglas Nyholm. And first place in the electronic category is The Scanner, South Carolina Numismatic Association, edited by Stephen Kuhl. Do 
Okay. That, thank you so much, Barbara. It's always great to hear from you. I hope everything is going well with you, and Steve. Anyway, moving on to the Outstanding District Representative Award, I'd like Richard Josephiak, if you could uh, follow through and, and read these out. These are important. All right. The Outstanding District Rep Award is given to our top district rep who has contributed the most and to recognize the person for their contributions, not just to the ANA, but also to the hobby in general. The district rep program is about 35 years old, and we currently have slightly over 100 volunteers in the program. 15, 15 of them are international. Every state is covered by a district rep, from Alaska to Hawaii to Florida to Maine. This year's 2020 district rep award uh, recipient has been very involved in Oklahoma. He's involved not only at the local level, but at the Oklahoma Numismatic Association, which is a very large state organization. He has contributed much to not just the ANA and his local organizations, but to the hobby by reaching out and supporting it at um, coin shows and meetings. This year's 2020 recipient is Mr. Uh, Gary Parsons, and I believe he is on. There he I'm is. I'm on. Okay, and I believe he's received his award. It looks like he's holding it. Would you like to say a few words, Gary? Yes, I would. Uh, I want to start by thanking Richard and anybody that was involved in selecting me this year, but I'm just one of many. And uh, the district reps do make a big difference, I, I like to think, in the hobby. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the rec recognition, but uh, I've gotten far more from ANA and uh, the organization that I've given. Um, I want to thank all of you for mainly for being my friend. I'm getting to an age where you know, your friends uh, become most important. And I'm going to close by inviting everybody to our show in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, uh, September the 11th, 12th, and 13th. And it's looking like we're going to get a pretty good turnout. Um, and uh, right now it's a go. So thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Gary. Uh, just to let you know, I, I'm going to be there at your show, and it's been the first time. I know. Time, it's you <laughs> do. I'm looking That's forward the first to time I've ever, <laughs> yeah, It'll be great to see you, and it'll be the first time I've ever uh, done a show in Oklahoma. Well, <laughs> it's be about great. time. <laughs> I'm sorry. You better and be also, careful. I also want to thank you. Fight. I want to also thank you for your service as being a Marine. Once a Marine, mm -hmm. always a Marine. And so we certainly thank you for doing that. It's That's a pretty tough outfit. <laughs> You'll well, be an Indian. Be when I was around. Like Cherokee country. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Thanks again. And Richard, thanks again for uh, going through all this with You're us. And Gary also. Uh, you bet. The Young Numismatist Literary Awards, the ANA presents annual awards to encourage young writers to ensure a crop of future numismatic authors and researchers. The YN Literary Award categories are named in honor of authors dedicated to educating the next generation of numismatists. Uh, the generous prizes in, in the yearly competition are provided by Whitman Publishing and are substantial. Uh, the first place prize uh, category receives a $500 cash prize plus a $500 voucher to help build their personal library with Whitman uh, uh, books, numismatic books. The second place receives a $200 book, a dollar book voucher and third, a $100 book voucher. Uh, I'd like to, to uh, would like to announce the winners of this year's Q. David Bowers Young Numismatist Literary Awards for ages 13 to 17. Um, are, uh, Brianna, are we going to have either Mary or uh, Barbara announce these, or do you want me to read them? We didn't talk about it, but if, would you decide what you would like? 
Okay, well, let's just move on then because they're listed up there. Caleb uh, Audette for Legendary Men of America's Treasury Notes is the third place winner. Our second uh, place winner is Luke Daniel for Throw Me Something, Mister, A History of Mardi Gras Doubloons. And our first place winner goes to Alexandria Bojeko. Did I say that right? Boeko. Boeko, I apologize. For the wonderful world of pattern coins, coins, the history of pattern coinage from 1792 to 1880. Congratulations. Next is the Ken Brissett Young Numismatist Literary Award for ages 18 to 22. First place. Award goes to Cole Hendrickson for John Galt and his new metallic currency. Congratulations to all these amazing young researchers and writers. The Young Numismatists of the Year Award, the YN of the Year Award, the highest accomplishment that we, the ANA can bestow on a young collector is being named the ANA Young Numismatists of the Year. The honor is given to those who show exceptional achievement in the hobby. Many of the past recipients of this award have gone on to accomplish great things in numismatics. Amazing when you read through the list of the past recipients because there's so many well-known collectors and, and contributors and governors and past presidents of the ANA. This year we recognize Garrett Seiss for his contributions to the hobby. He is an active member of 10 numismatic organizations, including the Liberty Seated Collectors Coin Club, the LSCC, the Wilmington Coin Club, and the Currency uh, Club of Chester County. Already an accomplished author, he has written eight numismatic articles over the span of four years that were published in the John Wright Commer uh, Journal and the official publication of the John Wright Collector Society. Further, he coordinated the Early American Coppers Table at the 2019 World's Fair of Money in Chicago, headed a successful YN benefit auction during the 2019 Summer Seminar, and volunteered with the ANA Kids Zone. Seiss <clears throat> has also awarded several first place honors in the YN's Literary Awards between 2013 and 2017. Thank you for all you do to support the hobby, Garrett, and congratulations for this outstanding accomplishment. Would you like to say a few words? Well, thank you, Colonel Ellsworth. Um, it's really a huge honor to be the YN of the year. And I'm, I'm very grateful for all the support and the encouragement that I've gotten from the ANA and the numismatic community in general over the years. Uh, the first coin show that I attended was at, it was the 2012 World's Fair of Money in Philadelphia, which was back when I was nine years old. And I went to several of the Money Talks presentations and met Pam Stitely, who was introducing the Money Talks speakers that year. She told me about the Wilmington Coin Club and she invited me to become a member. And then later on in the week, I participated in my first ANA YN auction and after the auction, I met Brad Karloff, who was the auctioneer. And what Mrs. Stitely and Mr. Karloff both did that had a big impact was to follow up with me after the convention to answer my numismatic questions and uh, to make sure that I knew how to get more involved in the hobby. Now, since then, I've had many numismatic teachers who have taken the time at club meetings and at coin shows to talk with me and to educate me because they know that education is an important part of enjoying the hobby and also growing as a collector. So I really appreciate everyone who has done this. Thank you very much. And I don't, I don't think there's another hobby that's more supportive of new members than numismatics. And I will do everything I can to bring new members into our hobby and to give them the same support that I've had. Now, this year, I've especially missed attending summer seminar and coin shows and seeing everyone in person. So I hope that 2021 will be a better year and we can all be together again. So thank you again very much. And I hope that everyone stays healthy. Thanks, Garrett. It's been a pleasure knowing you. you. And uh, you are well deserving of this honor. Thank you. Uh, next, we'd like to go to the uh, Lawrence uh, Larry Gentile, it's Lawrence J. Gentile, uh, Senior Memorial Award for Outstanding Adult Advisor. The, the uh, 
I, I always want to call him Larry, but the Lawrence J. Gentile Senior Memorial Award for Outstanding Adult Advisor recognizes that without strong adult leaders and mentors, young people will not be able to grow and learn to enjoy the wonderful hobby of coin collecting. This award is presented to an individual who has devoted their effort to recruiting beginning young numismatists and aiding in the development of the YNs. This year's recipient is Brian Fanton. Uh, Brian, thank you for the nurture of the future hobbyists. And unfortunately, unless he joined the last few minutes, Brian was not able to join us today's presentation. He was is not. He, did, he, did, did he join Brianna or not? He did not, not today. Okay, great. Well, anyway, everybody knows Brian. He's, he's, he's a past board member of ANA and he's just a real stalwart. He's been an instructor out at the summer seminar and and a, a real face on the board's floors and so forth. And he runs a wonderful operation and, uh, at his coin shop there. And he's just a, a tremendous uh, asset to our hobby. Burnett Anderson Memorial Award for Excellence in Numismatic Writing. And uh, uh, Mark, you're on. Uh, would you like me to read this first part about the award or would you like to do that? Do you have um, that? It's completely up to you, Steve. If you've got it, go ahead. If you don't, I, I don't it. have your written. I don't have your written uh, comments. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me uh, let me read the first little bit here. Uh, Burnett Anderson Memorial Award for Excellence in Numismatic Writing is presented annually to a researcher, author, or journalist in recognition of their body of work and career contributions in numismatics. The award is intended to recognize quality and integrity in numismatic wordsmithing of every kind. First conferred posthumously in 1999 to its namesake, a, numis, a newsman's journalist, the award is sponsored by Krause Publications. The recipient is selected in a cooperative process by the ANA, the American Numismatic Society, and the Numismatic Literary Guild. And would you like to read this year's recipient? Um. The uh, recipient this year is Oliver Hoover, who I've had the pleasure of getting to know a little bit, and he's very much a worthy candidate for this award. Um, my dad really loved the hobby. He loved meeting the people. Steve, at the beginning of the uh, Zoom call, said some nice things about my dad, but he really got a kick out of all the stories, and I don't mean just the news stories, the things that he learned from people in the hobby. It was a wonderful second career for him, and uh, I'm just thrilled and grateful to the ANA, the ANS, and the NLG for, for uh, grinding through the process of maintaining this award and finding a worthy candidate every year. Thank you. Uh, also, you mentioned the ANS and uh, uh, Jill uh, Brandborg, uh, of the, uh, who's the executive director of the ANS, and I have had a number of conversations over this COVID thing and comparing our notes on how we're running the organizations. And, uh, and then also there was Ron Guth, I know is on your committee from the Numismatic Literary Guild. And, uh, and so uh, you've got a great team there and it really is wonderful. <laughs> with you. Thank you, I agree. It is a great team. I have very, very little to do with the selection process, but I do like to show up uh, for the physical award. I don't know where the medal itself is right now, but Oliver will certainly get it in due time, and it's a lovely piece. Is, uh, is Oliver on the call right now? or uh, I, can... I am. Oh, great. Well, would you like to say a word or two? Can you hear me? You bet we can. We do. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for this award, first of all. Uh, it came as a complete surprise, and it is a great honor. Um, I was asked to say a few words, and I am going to say them now, and I hope they won't be a cause of too much regret. <laughs> <laughs> as, as many listeners will be aware, among other things, Alexander the Great was one of the most prolific coin issuer, issuers of the ancient world. Centuries after he was gone, it became a popular writing exercise for Greek and Roman students to compose arguments as to whether he had achieved his accomplishments through his own innate excellence or through the unseen workings of fortune. I can assure you that if I did anything that you thought was great and deserving of this award, there is no question that it was thanks to good fortune. It was only through good fortune that almost 30 years ago, 
I was first introduced to the wonder of ancient coins through the small Roman collection at McMaster University used by Dan Geegan and Bruce Brace, sadly both now departed, to teach about material evidence in an undergraduate history course. It was likewise, only by good fortune, that a few years later I came to know Arthur Houghton, who provided many early opportunities to publish on Seleucid coins, my true passion, and also sparked my interest in Nabataean coins. Perhaps the greatest stroke of good fortune, however, came in 2000, when Uta Wartenberg, then the new executive director of the American Numismatic Society, took a big chance on the quiet Canadian kid and permitted him to work for the ANS from a home office, back before COVID made that sort of thing trendy. It was really this leap of faith that provided the opportunity for me to be as productive as I have been over the last 20 years. And it has been my exposure to two generations of ANS staff, four ANS presidents, and various fellows and trustees that has broadened my horizons to include not only ancient coins, but also medieval, Islamic, and early American coins, as well as Indian peace medals and modern paper money. Even now, I continue to enjoy the favor of fortune in my wonderful wife, kids, and parents, all of whom still dutifully smile and nod their heads when I start to talk about some obscure new numismatic thing that I have learned or written. I am very grateful for all of this good fortune. It seems to me more than one person rightly ought to have. And I am very honored to receive this award, which is as much a testament to it as it is to the body of written work. Again, thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, uh, uh, Oliver. And also, Mark, thank you for your work, too, in this. This is wonderful. Um, the a and Literary Awards, Brianna, is, uh, is Caleb on the call, or is he? He is. Let me find him. Because I'd like to uh, let him go through this, but uh, while you're seeing, I'm going to just uh, <clears throat> introduce it a little bit. The ANA's 2020 Literary Awards recognize articles published in the 2019 volume of the ANA official magazine, The New Mismatist. You know, it's one of the, the crown jewels of our organization. The New Mismatist was launched by ANA founder and first editor George Heath in 1888 and it's celebrating its 132nd year of publication. If, uh, if Caleb's on, he can certainly go ahead and, and read these off. That'd be wonderful. I'd be happy to, Steve. Uh, Y'all can Steve. hear me? Sure. All right. Well, thank you all for being here today. I'm very excited to announce the winners for the Heath Literary Awards for 2020. Uh, third place is David Shankman for Turnpikes and Toll Roads, Tokens, Tickets, and Script of America's Early Highways, published in June of 2019. Second place is Nick Breyer for Bernard's Treasury Notes, published in November 2019. And first place is Tom Delory and Dan Owens for Not a Ghost of a Chance, Revisiting the Mystery of the 1873S Seated Liberty Dollars, published in July 2019. Great. Now, don't run away because you're going to get to do one more, I believe. All right. Uh, and uh, anyways, I didn't introduce Caleb to some of the, the new people that may not know that have joined, that he is our newest editor-in-chief. And of course, we welcome him and he's doing a great job. And uh, anyway, Caleb, I, I now introduce you. Please go ahead. And, and <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Next award. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So for third place for the Wait and Olga Raymond Memorial Literary Award is David McCarthy for a 1942 High Relief Scent Pattern published in January of 2019. Second place, also David McCarthy with uh, Kevin Benton for the first Fugio Scent published in June 2019. And first place is Tom Delory and Dan Owens for Not a Ghost of a Chance, Revisiting the Mystery of the 1873S Seated Liberty Dollars, published in July 2019. Perfect. Would you like to continue on? Uh, Caleb, you're doing such a great job on this. I'd like to give you a little time in the spotlight there. Well, sure, scene. I'd be happy to. Sure. All it right. The Catherine Sheehan Award. All right. 
So third place goes to David Shankman for the script of Dubois, Pennsylvania, published in February of 2019. Second place is Nick Breyer for Bernard's Treasury Notes, published in November 2019. And first place is Heinz Schockler for The Wild Man in the New World, published in September of 2019. Great. Why don't you keep on going? You're, you're fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. I don't mind a, a bit of time in the spotlight. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> uh, third place goes to uh, Mike Gazvoda for A Striking Evolution, published in December 2019. Second place is Michael Shutterly for Portraits of Byzantium, published in January 2019. And first place is Thomas A. Palmer for From the Sublime to the Ridiculous, Celtic Imitations of Athassian Tetradrachms, published in November of 2019. Well, congratulations to all our literary award winners. Is uh, Tom Palmer on the call, uh, Brianna? Let me see here. Um, I'm not seeing him today. Okay, well, I was just going to give a special shout out to Tom. I've, I've known Tom for a long time, and uh, he's been a great supporter and a great, uh, a great uh, mentor to a lot of people in numismatics. I'd like to uh, now thank everyone for spending an afternoon uh, with us to celebrate some of our most dedicated and accomplished ho hobbyists. I'm pleased that we could come together under these special circumstances uh, and do our very first Zoom uh, uh, award ceremony, which is wonderful. Before we end this event, we'll share the names of members reaching their milestones. And if you, you can just put those, they're up on the screen there. I see them, beautiful. That we can, uh, you can go ahead and read through those. And if you're not taking advantage of the free e-learning academy courses mm -hmm. that are now available online, I strongly encourage you to attend the class. And we just finished posting our Money Talks and the Sunman Lecture Series online as well. So check these out. There's a lot that we've done. Uh, some of it was in the works, but we accelerated our pace after the COVID uh, crisis, pandemic, I should say. And it is a crisis also. We have also launched a new product called Two Bits, which is hosted by the Money Museum curator, Doug Mudd, and the numismatist contributing author, Mitch Sanders, that can be found on the money.org podcast. New virtual exhibits have been added to the Money Museum section of our website as well. The new 3D virtual reality tour can be seen on our current exhibit, Money of the Empire, Elizabeth to Elizabeth. And the museum just recently uh, completed a virtual exhibit of Coins, Crown, and Conflict, an exploration of Cromwell's England. And if you need more numismatic content to read, our ANA Club Press blog is updated biweekly and can be found on our website. Congratulations again to all the recipients of these awards, and we uh, hope to see you again like I started the meeting with in Phoenix at our March uh, National Money Show. It's going to be a great convention. Keep your fingers crossed. We do hope we can have it. Uh, and if there's nothing else to add, I would just say thank you again for putting up with this hard work that uh, we did. And it looked like, Brianna, you and your team have, and Kim have pulled this off admirably. Thank you.